the hammer. A hammer comes in different, there are different types of hammers and hammers have different weight. They weigh different amounts depending on the size of the nail. The smaller the nail, the smaller the hammer and the lighter weight of the hammer. So I would put my nail on top of my wood, tap it to create a hole. Once that hole is there, I lean my nail to the side, to either side, and I tap it in. And again, I'm using my tool as if it's a part of me. I keep the alignment from the hammer to my wrist to my elbow. My grip is near the bottom so that the weight of the hammer can be used. And what do I mean by that? I can lift the hammer and just drop it. And the weight of the hammer helps connect the wood together, help push the nail into the wood. If I need more power, then I use my elbow. And I bend my elbow to get more power. And I drop it. And that's all I'm doing, lifting and dropping. I am not throwing the hammer down. I'm dropping the hammer in a controlled manner using my elbow as my pivot point. You'll notice I keep my elbow close to my body, not out here, not out here. My alignment is more here. My elbow close to my body, my arm straight, a nice grip, but not a tight grip, near the bottom of the hammer so that the weight of the hammer goes down. Now sometimes you'll notice my wrist will bend like that, but that's for soft tapping blows. To get more of a powerful blow, I pivot here at my elbow and I try to strike the nail on the head here like that. My elbow is there. I'm keeping my eye on the head of the nail, but also on where the nail is going to. And I just hammer. And this happens when your wood is too short and your nail is too big. The grain of the wood can split. So for short pieces of wood, you may want to use a smaller nail and not a big nail. You see, the nail forces the grain of the wood to separate. And this, the lines here, the rings, is the grain. This is your grain. It is a weak point that can split open. So you think about the size of the nail and the size of the wood and where the grain is. We have our hammer to put the nail in place, but now how do we remove it? We can use a claw hammer with a curved claw, not the straight claw, but the curved one. We can use that to get the job done here. There's a, a hammer that has a straight claw. That claw is really for breaking wood apart. You can use it almost like a hatchet to break wood apart if you need to. Or we could use some type of crowbar. These are referred to as crowbars. Crowbars used to be big and long and heavy. Now we have thinner ones. This is more of a uh, newer type of crowbar. It's lighter in weight than the big old ones and it gets the job done. It has a slightly curved claw. It has an insert to insert the nail and then pull it out. It has the 
slightly curved claw to insert and pull it out. And for heavy duty, it has a bent claw, a claw that is totally bent at almost, uh, what is that, a 80, 90 degree? So that way, you can really get into it and lift the nail out. So since my nail is up high, it's not practical to use this. It just doesn't fit and do a very good job at removing the nail. So I'll go back to my hammer with a curved claw. I could pull it out, but you'll notice the nail is all almost all the way out and the claw is a little short. I run out of space on my claw once it curls up. So what I can do is take a wedge and put it under to lift my hammer up. And now my hammer is closer to the head of the nail and I can rock it back and remove it. This type has a smaller claw and the claw is almost sharp at the tip. You'll see it bevels down and becomes almost sharp. This allows me to dig into the wood and I can use a hammer to assist me. So if my nail is all the way down, buried in the wood and I can't get to it with my regular claw, it just slides over, I can take this and hammer into the wood. And then I can lift and pull the nail out. If the two pieces of wood are attached together and you need, you cannot pull the, the nail out because it is beyond the surface so you can't reach it, you can use the claw to separate these two pieces just like you would as if this was a uh, crowbar. Like this is a crowbar. Let's move on to nails. You can also attach lumber together using different types of nails. I have four nails here. Let's start with the galvanized. This is a galvanized nail. You'll see it's gray and it's dull in color. It's actually a roofing nail for putting a roof on top of a shed or chicken coop. You'll notice the head is flat. So it too sits right at the top or flush with the surface. It is galvanized metal so it can be used outdoors. It has rings. This part, this part of the nail is called the shank. This part is the head where the hammer would strike. You'll notice the shank has ridges. They're kind of hard to see, but you can see ridges up here on the upper part of the shank. What these ridges do is they help to hold the nail into the lumber. Believe it or not, these ridges will grab the lumber and hold it in place. And then the point. It has a sharp point on it that helps cut into the fiber of the wood. And you'll notice the point has angles. It is not round like the shank. It is cut with different angles that come to a point and that helps cut through the fibers of the wood. Back to uh, nails. This nail is a what we what we refer to as a finishing nail. This one uh, is a indoor nail for connecting two pieces of lumber together. You'll notice the head of the nail is very small, very small. The head. What this allows for is for the head to be buried 
into the wood so it can be hidden so that you can't see it. This is a finishing nail. The shank is hard to see, but it also have ridges close to the, to the head of the nail. And these ridges help grab the wood and hold the nail in place. This nail, we, we refer to this as a penny nail. It's called a penny nail because they used to weigh the nail compared to a penny. Or in England, it was a pence, I believe. So, a eight penny nail referred to the fact that it had the same weight as eight pennies. So we call it a penny nail. These nails are designed for indoors or outdoors. The metal that's used is mostly iron and that, believe it or not, can be used outdoors unlike the screw that is iron but has no coating on it. It will rust a lot faster. This screw, believe it or not, is not as shiny as it used to be, but it used to be fairly shiny because it is coated with a stainless steel type of metal. And it's just a thin coating. Sometimes the complete nail will be made out of stainless steel or another metal uh, that will not rust as quickly as pure iron. So a lot of people like using screws because the screw has threads that will cut into the wood and keep the screw from being pulled out. These, the shanks on these are smooth. So why does it hold itself into the wood and it's hard to pull out, even though it's very smooth, the surface is smooth. Well, this is what happens. Lumber has moisture inside. It has kind of like water inside, you know? Uh, so that moisture will typically rust the nail when it's inside of the lumber. That rust will coat the nail in a way to where the nail is now very hard to pull out of the wood. But there is really no difference in the holding power, the power of the nail to hold two pieces of lumber together. It has the same amount of holding power. The only difference is your preference. Which one are you more comfortable using? A hammer and nail or a drill and a screw? It's all about your preference.